Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. In today's video, we're going to dive into a topic that is crucial for content creators and businesses alike. We'll be discussing how to get videos to rank on Google search and giving five actionable items that you can do starting today to help your videos rank higher on Google results pages. Video is more important than ever when it comes to dominating search engine results pages and creating organic content on YouTube that can help people who are searching for tutorials or content online about a given topic can be really useful in driving more traffic to both your channel, your videos, but also your business at large. You can take a look at Kapwing's main channel and see this to be true. We have gained over 100,000 subscribers, have gotten many, many millions of views on our channel, and have driven millions of creators to our website and to our product to start editing on Kapwing themselves all through organic content that is not sponsored and that we create in-house. And this is largely due to the success of our content that is driven from search results. And this is because more recently, Google search has added videos very frequently to the top of search results and that drives a lot of traffic. People are becoming less likely to click on a blog article with a tutorial on it and more likely to click on video because the video is proliferating more than ever before. So Google has been adapting to user preferences and placing a lot of videos on Google search results. This means that if you optimize your videos effectively, you could have a great chance of appearing at the top of Google search results, which can drive a lot of traffic to your content or your business. So without further ado, here are five actionable things that you can do to rank higher on Google search. Let's get into it. Okay, number one, and this is probably the most important, frankly, is researching relevant keywords. So before you even make a video, what you wanna do is come up with a bunch of ideas that you think might do well for ranking on Google. Then for each of them, you're going to use a tool, something like SEMrush, which can help you with SEO research. So I'm gonna pass it off to our SEO specialist here at Kapwing, Megan, who will tell you all about how to use tools like SEMrush to get the data that you need to inform whether or not you should make a video in the first place. So usually when I am researching a keyword or a topic, I will go into SEMrush and use the keyword overview tool so I'll just type in the topic here. Let's say that we're looking at captions versus subtitles. I'll search it up. It has some pretty low volume, low keyword difficulty. And if you want something with higher search volume, you can scroll down and look at some of the keyword variations and see if there's maybe a different phrasing that will get you to a higher volume. So it looks like more people are searching closed captioning versus subtitles than just captions versus subtitles with about a thousand monthly searches, but it's still a pretty low difficulty. So the next thing that you would want to do is look at the SERP analysis. This is the search engine results page analysis. You're going to be looking at who is currently ranking. Use this pop out view to view the SERP as it actually would look on Google. We have some featured snippets up here. And then if you scroll down, this is what we're looking for here for video SEO. These are YouTube videos that are all ranking on the first page. So this is a pretty good indicator that this would be a good keyword to go after on Google with a YouTube video. We have this one from 2021, this one from 2021, this one from 2015, and this one from 2019, which means that a newer video that is recently released would have a chance of being shown in these results if it's getting lots of views on YouTube and if it has the right keywords in the description and in the text of the video. This is a good indicator that a video would be well served on the front page. So relevant data points include how competitive a term is, how much search volume it's getting, how recent the results that are ranking are, because if they're not very recent, you might be able to just remake a similar video and outrank them because Google does have a recency bias. And it's really, really important to do this because if you're going to spend, you know, one or two or even three full days working on a video that you make amazingly, but either the volume of the search term is really low or maybe it's a super competitive term that will be really difficult to rank for on Google because there's so many other resources about it, then you might not want to use that time making those videos. It'll be really difficult to rank and instead maybe make a video about something else that's much easier to rank for and has a higher search volume, AKA will probably drive more traffic to your content. So once you find some keywords or titles that you think might work well for 
before creating a piece of content on, let's get on to the next steps. Number two is when you are recording and editing, you need to make a video that's highly engaging. Watch time is everything these days and Google obviously wants to reward videos that keep people watching. So focus on creating content that is valuable from start to finish. Don't give too much fluff in the beginning of your videos. Don't say things that aren't relevant to the topic. And you can also add things like movement in your video with moving zooms, jump cuts, and things like that. There are entire videos on Kapwing's YouTube channel, which I can link up here, that will share with you how to add movement to your videos super easily using an online video editor called Kapwing. Number three, you're going to want to create compelling thumbnails. When videos appear on Google, the thumbnails also appear. So creating a dynamic thumbnail is really important. Make sure that your thumbnail is eye-catching, readable, and representative of the content that you're making the video about. A well-designed thumbnail can increase click-through rate, which drives a lot more traffic to your video and can help you rank higher on Google. Number four is really important, and I think a lot of people don't consider this one, and it is adding timestamps to your description of your video. Adding timestamps in the description can help inform the viewer and also Google about what is happening happening in your video at what time. And they also share which parts of your video are the most important for somebody to watch who is searching something up. They will share key moments within a video that viewers should watch or pay attention to. And it'll immediately start viewers watching a video at certain timestamps. This is because Google wants to give people who are searching for something the content they're looking for immediately. It's not gonna share with people a long intro or a backstory or anything like that. It's going to give people exactly what they want. So if I am searching on Google, how do I add subtitles to this video? It's going to pull a video about subtitling, but it might start someone who clicks on that video on Google one minute into the video rather than at the exact beginning, because if there's a long intro, they're not gonna care. So make sure to timestamp your videos with what is happening in your views and also with relevant keywords that might help you rank on different Google pages as well, not just the one that you're going after. And lastly, just make sure that your video title and description are once again, in line with what you did research on. They should have relevant keywords that you think you can easily rank for on Google. The description can have a variation though of those certain key terms, maybe in a different tense or different phrasing, so that you might be able to rank on other terms as well, but make sure you're trusting the data and the research that you did early on. Make sure not to use any clickbait or anything like that. On YouTube, clickbait or being vague can kind of work because if it's on the home page and someone's already looking for something to watch on YouTube, maybe they'll click something that they don't know exactly what the video is about, but on Google search, it cannot be this way. It has to give people exactly what they're searching for and what their intent is. So make sure that your titles and descriptions are concise, informative, and contextual. By keeping in mind these five tangible actions, you are well on your way to having your videos rank highly on Google results pages, which for a lot of businesses and creators can be a great way to bring people to your content and to your business. Organic content is kind of everything these days. Maybe I'm biased because I am a content creator, but I think it's important and a lot of businesses are underutilizing content because they just don't know how impactful it can be on their business. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with other tips and tricks like this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.